All right. Then uh, our next speaker, as you can see, is Yas Heiser from the Free University of Berlin uh, with many results in quantum information, quantum and body physics. And he will uh, add, <laughs> talk about our workshop. No, I'm joking. It's just the title is the same. So <laughs> go ahead. Yes. Yeah, so um, thanks so very much indeed. Thanks for the kind invitation and thanks to the organizers, specifically Yanis, for the effort and sweat of setting up this um, wonderful meeting on entanglement assisted communication networks. And well, maybe unsurprisingly, this is precisely what this talk will be about. In fact, to such an extent that I could not resist the temptation to give the talk the same title. So it's a short talk. And even if we meander through the theme and look at the problem from different angles, there will be a single question in the focus of all this. Now, obviously, one of the reasons why we're all here, at least virtually in these awkward times, is that quantum key distribution allows for unprecedented security levels based on quantum mechanics. That's, of course, true in point-to-point -point quantum key distribution, but specifically in recent years, and what could be showcasing this better than this meeting, the idea of quantum networks has been inspiring. So where um, uh, one has like several or even many untrusted links, say in V-centers, ions and communication links, say via optical fibers on free space links that connect the potentially many nodes in the network. And the question basically is great, but so what? What advantages can we hope for that are not conceivable in bipartite point-to-point -point scenarios? That's, of course, too big a question for a short talk and also the focus of large-scale research consortia. But we will have a look at several, say, cute ramifications of the question in what way genuinely multipartite aspects may matter after all. The maybe most important question is in what way there can be a network coding advantage um, over point-to-point -point protocols. That's a surprisingly delicate question that we will address in the secret sharing setting. It's a rather practical question. We look at realistic, practical parameters. So there's a, a P up there on the, on the right-hand side in, of, 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 of the slide. So relatedly, but more conceptually speaking, um, we ask, and this gives a C, in the multipartite setting, how, how multipartite states can be manipulated in the first place. And very, very briefly, picking up a theme that was prominent in the talks yesterday, if time allows, how practical need, uh, repeater networks can be devised and simulated after all. But let's get going and start with our conceptual question first, maybe how multipartite and tangled states can be manipulated as a fundamental um, limit. So for bipartite states, there's obviously lots of uh, technological barriers, but in principle, things are simple and that only one kind of pure state entangled, entanglement exists. That's the EPR pair, the, the maximum entangled pair of two qubits. Also the full question, at what rates can be asymptotically transformed, like states, how, at what rates states can be transformed into others, has been completely settled. There's one number to rule them all. The um, entanglement entropy dictates the optimal conversion rate. So this was one of the early results in the field dating back to the mid 90s. The question of conversion rates for multipartite states also came up then in the, in the mid 90s, but um, unlike the, the former, it has never really found an answer. And recently we made quite serious progress on the question, providing upper bounds to all rates for all multipartite conversions. In fact, they can be tight, giving rise to the precise asymptotic LSSC rates. One that can be expressed in entropic terms for three parts that look like that. Um, and they look particularly simple. It gets much less obvious for more parties, but they can always be explicitly, um, explicitly stated. Now the proof is long and winding, 
uh, it's, it's quite a chainsaw massacre, but at the heart of it is basically a proof of induction that builds on the idea of entanglement combing. That's the idea that multipartite states can be combed and transformed into sets of bipartite states in a certain sense, for which the polytope of reachable sets can be identified. And then one puts together primitives of state merging, entanglement assisting that go back to work by Andreas Winter and others in an elaborate fashion to in the end get the right rates out in an asymptotic um, protocol. So of course these rates may not be reached in practice, but it's substantial progress on an old question in the field that the, well, the old guys in, in the field know as one of the, the big open questions uh, providing substantial uh, progress and they still provide the ultimate bounds of how multipartite states can be manipulated. Slightly more practically speaking, but still somewhat conceptually, um, in entanglement distribution, how can multipartite routing, how can a routing advantage in quantum networks be conceived? Well, that's an, for an important class of multipartite quantum states, so called graph states. So certain stabilizer states, this question can be actually settled in, in, in quite some generality there. There was work by the Veda group and our group at, at the same time independently. Interestingly, the entire problem of state manipulation becomes the so-called vertex minor problem. It's an NP hard problem. And it's an interesting insight in its own right that quantum network routing is actually a computationally hard problem. But we can also find practical algorithms for target states such as Greenberg or Seidinger states and so on. Indeed, there are network advantages for say GAZ states and bottleneck networks. So in a way, multipartite settings can, can provably help over bipartite setting. That's great. Um, so there is a case. And that's conceptually very interesting. But can there be actually a practical network coding advantage, say a smoking gun that gives rise to an interesting practical application of a kind? Now, a multipartite protocol that's often cited in this context, but also small, that is also more subtle than is sometimes assumed, is the is the secret sharing protocol. It's a scheme where it's a cryptographic scheme where some parties um, share a secret, uh, but they can reveal the secret only if the, if the right crowd of people comes, to, comes together. So actually an NK threshold scheme shares a secret among N players such that any K subset coming together can recover the information while any K minus one subset remains completely ignorant about the secret that is, that is being shared. This scheme is not new. I mean, classical secret sharing is possible with Shamir scheme that dates back to the, to the 70s, combined with bipartite uh, QKD. And um, yeah, that, that's, that can be done. The, the trouble is that this and also invariants of entanglement-based schemes are not secure against members of the of the bad guys of the of the unauthorized set to 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 eavesdrop and that's also true for early versions of like gz based multipartite schemes that they're not um secure against participant um, attacks so this scheme has fascinated many over the years and there's no time to go through the literature but i should say that this issue um with the participant attack has been settled in the asymptotic limit of infinitely long keys. This was then pushed further to be augmented to a composable secure scheme. That's a particularly stringent uh, way of security in which the protocols remain secure, even if arbitrarily composed and with other instances of the same protocol or, or with other protocols and in the finite size regime, which is important as asymptotic settings for quantum key distribution can be very, very 
asymptotic and mean very long sequences. And to speak with Ian Wormsley, experimentalists are not asymptotic people. So finite keys are very important in, in, in this set or finite size regime keys. But where is the network coding advantage? Well, there is in bottleneck networks where all the communication is done via a routing link. This is plausible from a practical perspective where one thinks of hubs in the center and then that they further distribute entanglement to minor subnodes. And that's a point also made by Dagmar Brust and others when they considered conference uh, key agreement in the, in, in the quantum setting. So what's to be maximized? The scheme should be working. So it should be epsilon correct and secure, so epsilon secure. And indeed, for continuous variable settings, for squeezed continuous variable light, so using only um, offline squeezing and passive optics and meaningful measurements with homodyne, um, we have ultimately a secret sharing scheme that offers a quantum coding advantage over QKD. And um, that's outperforming QKD in the worst case values of failures of both secrecy and correctness. And it works in the realistic composable secure scheme and for finite in the finite key regime as, as, as well. And again, the, the, it's, it's a perfectly feasible scheme. The measurements being done are just like X and P type homolining measurements. So measurements that can be perfectly feasibly done with present um, technology. Um, so the workhorse here under the hood are continuous variable entropic uncertainty relations for smooth entropies, um, oops, uh, which goes back to work by, um, by Fabian Fuller and uh, Reinhard Werner um, and so on quite some time ago. I, I insist that this is actually quite practical. Yes, the schemes are for, for the SNED, um, for the, for the uh, jump. So we look at their advantage over QKD schemes, even in the agnostic repeaterless blob bound, which is still outperformed by, by the scheme for say several kilometers of optical fibers and found that for reasonable distances, say four kilometers, there's still a multi network coding advantage sustaining that go beyond QKD, so beyond point to point architectures. So, the, so there is an advantage in a, in a practical setting to go multi to go to a network coding scheme beyond a point to point setting um, of, of, for the same task in a practical composable security and finite key regime with meaningful and feasible measurements. So um, this is a short talk that brings me already more or less to the end of the talk. I, I want to leave also questions, a time for questions. So in this talk, we set out to meander through the theme basically of the, of the workshop, asking in what way there can be a network coding, a, a entanglement based multi advantage over point to point settings. And we looked at the, at the question from several perspectives. First, from a more kind of conceptual mathematical perspective, bringing new light into the old question of multi entanglement manipulation, then seen as resources in entanglement in, 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 um, in networks, but also um, otherwise conceptually interesting, looking at the problem of routing in quantum networks, and then formulating a scheme that has a practical coding advantage over bipartite QKD in a realistic setting of finite keys composable security in the continuous variable setting with continuous variable graph states that require uh, resources only that are perfectly meaningful and, and, and sensible. So these efforts have been done within the network uh, Q-Link X that has been mentioned many times in this um, workshop, where the question I spoke about today were actually rather connoisseur topics for us, which I admittedly like very much. Our main work in the, in the past um, years were actually way more practically minded, where we cooked up a large scale Monte Carlo repeater simulation for quantum networks using um, experimentally meaningful parameters such as the coupling efficiency or the, uh, or the, um, the time for, for channel use and so on, complementing the, the um, simulation schemes that we saw yesterday nicely in that it's very much spot on to the experimental settings that are being explored within the QLIC-X network 
as a real-time Monte Carlo simulation of all conceivable and other experimental platforms. So the key question in this talk was, can we find a network coding advantage beyond point to point? And the answer is, in a nutshell, yes, we can. And with this, I thank you very much for your attention. I'm looking forward to the questions you might potentially have. Thanks so much for your attention. Thank you very much, Jens. So maybe let's start with the standard questions that we give to all the speakers, <laughs> right? Um, so the first one is, uh, uh, what do you think will be the first application of entanglement assisted communication networks? Oh, um, that, that, that's a great question. I mean, given that I try to be um, faithful to the theme of the workshop, I think the, the last topic I mentioned would be an, a very nice one. So, I mean, the a kind of continuous variable secret sharing scheme that outperforms not just some QKD scheme, but even the, the best blob bound based uh, QKD scheme, where there's the smoking gun that a multipartite setting helps over bipartite settings in, the, in certain regimes. That's, I think, a, a wonderful application. And that would be a, a good thing to be implemented. I think that's not so much up in the air to, to, to go along this path. I mean, of course, these are baby steps. Yeah, yeah. but there are baby steps in a, in a nice direction in the spirit of this workshop that there is a smoking gun, that there is a, a multi-partite coding advantage. I think that's a fair thing to say. Yeah, and it doesn't seem so far in the future, right? Uh, no, I don't, I don't think yeah. so. I mean, of course, I mean, other things hinted at of much uh, in the very far future, right? I mean, but that's that's obvious. That's what we've been thinking about the, the entire week. But I think this is a setting as a proof of principle where one should make the point that there is, it, it makes sense to go networks, to go multipartite. And that would be a nice thing to have also from an experimental perspective. So that's an invitation from, from our side. And toward this goal, what would be the biggest challenge you think? Um, well, I mean, as always, I mean, uh, I mean, in the, the, the scheme I mentioned is, a, is not a repeater scheme, right? I mean, that, that's, don't get me going on this. I mean, that's what we have been doing in QLink X for, for, for all the time. But I mean, in the, in the, in the continuous variable scheme, obviously is the, the state preparation. That's the, the, the toughest challenge. I mean, it, it doesn't use online squeezing and so on. I mean, it's, it's in the, in the realm of, of a realistic world but of course you need high squeezing levels and need to kind of distribute entanglement you need to have a, a, a kind of network this is not easy but it's um, also not up in the air so for a proof of principle point just making the the argument that there is a coding advantage i think that is is within scope but then the next steps are, are difficult no doubt about this but i mean this right. is something that we can have on the radar 